my channel. My name is Tiffany. If you are new here, I am a stay-at-home mother of three boys. This is going to be kind of a get ready with me chit chat type of video just because we are about to be leaving the house. Only one of my kids is napping at this moment. So if you hear any fighting or yelling or screaming or talking, that's what it is. So if you are new here, feel free to hit that red subscribe button down below and let's go ahead and just get started. So I'm not going to really talk through the steps that I'm doing. This is going to be pretty much the same look that I got with my everyday mommy makeup look so if you want more in detail go on over to that video to watch that there has just been a lot going on with our family and I just figured I would go ahead and get ready since I needed to do that anyways and then talk about what all is going on so if you have watched a recent video you know that we got an autism diagnosis for our two-year-old. We also have an eight-month-old, almost nine-month-old that has classic PKU. And then we have a five-year-old that is like, I'm not gonna say he's normal because I mean, what is normal? But he's just your average five-year-old. He likes to, I mean, he has his bad moments. So since getting the diagnosis, I've been told, sorry, um, I've been told that it's really important to find his triggers, like what makes him mad, and then go from there. The problem is, is that everything, everything almost seems like a trigger. I have a five-year-old and a two-year-old, and they're both boys. And like any other siblings, they fight. <laughs> and that is a trigger. Daniel can have something and be playing with it. And then Cade wants it. And then all bets are off. And that's a tough situation because you're supposed to like remove the triggers and stuff like that. So it's like, am I supposed to always take away the toys? Because that doesn't really seem fair. So I'm trying to, whenever Cade tries to take something away from Daniel... I take it away from Cade and give it back to Daniel and then just find something else for Cade. But that doesn't always work. So it's been rough to say the least. So yeah, I'm working around trying to find what works best. The triggers I'm trying to take away. All, all the triggers that I can take away. And trying to find ways to handle it to where there's not a huge freak out. Because once he gets going, it can take forever to bring him back down. It almost seems like we're always having a meltdown. What? Something is always wrong with at least one child. And that is really exhausting. When you feel like you're always trying to make it better for, for the children. And me and my husband don't really get date night as often as I feel like we need. And so I never get a break. I'm always with my kids. I, and sometimes mommy just needs a break. Sure, I am getting to the point where I don't like, I mean, it's not, I'm okay with leaving the kids with Kagan because he's kind of stepped up a lot more. The problem was is that he was always working, so he didn't really fully understand how hard it is. But there has been a couple times where he just had to come home because there were like, it was just that bad. I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes I don't handle the tantrums the best. Like there's sometimes like on the days where it's really, really hard that the only thing that I can do is just sit down and cry with him. He will headbutt me and ram me into the counters and like hit and kick and it's just, it's so sad to see my two-year-old express so much anger. But anyways, back to where I was at. I'm getting more comfortable with leaving the kids with Kagan. But it's also at the same time, like, whenever... I mean, I'm sure getting away alone would still be quite beneficial. But I also want to connect with my husband more because it seems like every time we're together we're like we just kind of teamwork it through the tantrums and the feedings and you know trying to make sure Daniel has enough attention and Cade's not 
you know, hurting people. I feel like we need more time to connect. It doesn't, you don't always get what you want. It doesn't always work out the way that you want it to. And then like at the end of the day, I am really tired. But like last night I was super tired. Like we were out, we were at my grandparents' house pretty much all day yesterday. And by the time we got home, like I just wanted to lay down in bed and that's fine. But once I got there, I couldn't sleep. So if you don't know, Cade has escaped from our house twice. It was both during the day. So scary, cause like he's two. And like he just took off, he didn't have a care in the world and it's like, I don't know, it was, it's nerve wracking. But then like last night, like I was laying in bed and I was all comfortable and I was like, did we lock the door? Like we need to make, I need, I need to get up and make sure it's locked. And then by whenever I got up, like, cause I just thought about it and I was like, no, you're just being crazy. Like the door is locked. He's not going to get out. He is in his room. There's a baby gate up, but sometimes he knocks down the baby gate and you know, he can work both of the locks. I debated in my head if I should get up or not, but it just got to the point where I just had to get up and check the doors. <laughs> so I was up pretty late. It just got to me like what if he does get out in the middle of the night like uh, I don't even I don't even want to go there but it's pretty nerve-wracking as you can imagine he's only two and the thought of him getting out in the middle of the night but I'm hoping maybe today or tomorrow after Kagan gets off work we can go find a lock and then another thing Cade has this thing where I don't know if you've noticed, but we keep the dressers in the living room because he likes to knock stuff down and I'm afraid that he'd be in the bedroom and knock down the dresser and get smushed because you know stuff like that does happen. I've seen it. I mean, not firsthand, but I've heard stories on that and so that just kind of makes me really nervous because he does like to, you know, open the drawers and try and climb up them and stuff like that. So. I keep the dressers in the living room just as a precaution and he likes to pull all the clothes out so now it's like I have had enough of folding clothes and putting them in those dressers for them to just get torn out I don't know I just have to find a different way to go about things and also the kid dumps out all uh, like if I like in the mornings he eats dry cereal or it could be a banana or it could be anything pretty much as long if it's not like spaghetti or like soupy like which he doesn't often eat foods like that because he doesn't like the he I don't know I want to say it's a texture but I don't know and that makes things pretty nerve-wracking because Landon has PKU he will pour out his food on the floor and Landon's a crawler now he does not like to be put in his bouncer he does not he only goes in his swing whenever he's tired he just wants to be on the floor playing and like the other day he got a hold of Cade's peanut butter sandwich like I turn around for one second to go potty and I come back and he's got this peanut butter sandwich in his hands I don't know that he put it in his mouth he might have but there was nothing in his mouth whenever I got to it no like we can't be doing that so things are just difficult in this moment of our life and I'm uh, hoping that as time goes on it's gonna little get a little as time goes on it's going to get easier or or we'll be able to handle it better well, only time will tell so because he likes to run off and he has so many tantrums it makes it to where we don't really go out in public a whole lot and that's really getting to me like I want to be able to leave my house and not worry I mentioned in the last video that the speech therapist that comes out she suggested getting one of those like kid leashes things and I think Kagan he's starting to warm up to that idea I want to be able to take my kids places. I want to be able to get out of the house and have fun. Do it safely to where I'm not like, I don't know. I'm sure you guys understand what I'm trying to say there, but we've just got to get out of this house sometimes. <sighs> I think that's all the makeup that I'm going to do today. And I think that that's pretty much all I have to talk about. That's what's on my mind. 
I just want to say thank you guys all for the kind words and all of the love and support. It means so much to me. I might not be able to respond to every comment that I get as fast as I would like, but I do try and get back to every single one of you guys. It means so much to me. I just can't say thank you enough. If you have any questions for us, leave those down in the comment section down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you like this style of video. Also, we hit 200 subscribers, so be looking out for the who knows who better challenge. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And we will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.